Hello everyone, I'm going to paint this thatched roof stone cottage from start to finish in watercolour. So join me and I hope you pick up lots of tips and techniques along the way to help you paint your own cottage. Okay, here we go, ready to paint our old stone thatched roofed stone thatch try it again old stone thatched roof cottage so i'm going to start with an underwash of yellow ochre um on the thatched roof to give it a bit of a, a glow from below when i paint on top so let's just wash this color all over the roof Now we're avoiding the stones that are weighing the thatched roof down because they are likely to be more um, cool coloured. So they'll have probably a, a bit of a blue undertone. So we don't want to put the yellow ochre onto them. So I'll just paint around these. Making sure your paint is uh, very wet so it doesn't dry out and leave you with any sharp lines as you go across and paint the full roof. So I'm just going to try and get the larger main part of the roof painted before the edge of my paint goes dry and leaves me that dry edge which, which will become a sharp edge if I don't catch it before it dries. So let's just go in now and go around the stones. So if you've got too much water on your brush it can be a little bit difficult to control the paint I've got a lot of water here, but I'll just do my best. It sort of makes the end of your brush a bit thicker if you've got too much water on it. So if I go and push some of that water off, you can see my point is sharper and it's easier to control. This is a gorgeous big brush I'm using. It's from Jackson's. It's a number two Raven and I absolutely love it. Can I ask if you're enjoying my video that you let me know in the comments and click subscribe as well so you'll see more videos from me. So I'm going to use the same colour, um, the uh, yellow ochre, um, just a bit more watered down to come down the front of this pillar. I've got a hair here somewhere. Now I'm going to leave a couple of areas not washed because uh, some of these stones will have a, a, a cooler undertone. Okay, and I'll do the same over here. And I'm going to go back in, I'll have to be really careful because if you can see that stone there, it's really wet. So if I pick up a little bit of that and push it off my brush, there we go, so that'll dry a little bit quicker. All that water is just sitting there like a puddle and it'll take quite a long time to dry, so I'll just pick up some of it. Yeah, so I'm going to use the same colour but even further watered down and I'm going to do the same thing across um, most of the stones on the main part of the cottage. So I'm going to leave again a few of the stones not painted with this wash because I'll give them a cooler, uh, a cooler colour. I always find when you're painting bricks, you always think of bricks as warm terracottas, yellows, oranges, 
um, but there is often um, random blue or grey coloured bricks in the mix. So I always add a few blue or grey coloured bricks in there. Let's do the same on this side. And this is a great way to get to get colour on your page so you're not scared of the white paper. It just gets you going. And it's less daunting if you just get colour down. I'll go and fill in a couple of bricks over here, stones rather. There we go, that's a good start. I'll also add the same colour, a little bit more intense, in this little part here. So this is the two front, uh, front door walls that are coming out. This is the bit of the wall that's going back the way. So it's in a lot of shade, but I'll just give it a, a wash to get the colour down and then I can darken that wash when things have dried. The curtains in the windows have a, a sort of checked tartan pattern on them. So I've realised I hadn't drawn that in, so I'm just drawing it in just now. Curving the lines to show the sort of curvedness of the 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 curtain pleats. So I've added a fair bit of more detail to the interior of the cottage through the windows, but you'll see what that is as we get painting it. So just now I'm just going to put the underwash of the cooler uh, stones on the stones that I hadn't painted. Add a touch of green as well. And I'll do the same at the other side here. So it's just a very, very watery wash. And I'll do the same with the um, front colours, front wall. Now, when I said I wasn't going to paint these stones with the underwash because they were all going to be cooler, I am going to paint some of them, make some of them warm. And some of them cool. I'll leave some of them to be cool. So I'll put the blue wash on some of them. Now, do you see this little area here? I'll zoom in a little bit. This little area here, that's called a bloom. So that's where I added a little bit of watery paint to existing paint when the existing paint was wet, sort of in between wet and dry, but it wasn't the same level of wetness as the wet paint I added. So that's when you get what's called blooms. And sometimes they can work great with your painting. Uh, and luckily, um, it's on the thatched roof of this cottage. In fact, it would be fine anywhere on this cottage because it's an old cottage with um, irregular textures. Um, so it will be fine. Um, 
in this painting and um, some uh, watercolour artists use that to their advantage. They encourage blooms. Uh, right, so where was I? Back to painting the stones. So I did that one. I'll just make it a wee bit stronger and I'll do some over here as well. And I'll get my blue-ish colour for the remaining ones. Maybe a little bit stronger because I might want them to be paler. So keep this first wash really very pale. So my door is going to be black, so I'll put the first wash, it's a wee bit too dark for the first wash, I'll just add a wee bit more water. Because you use the first wash as um, the highlight, if, if anything is going to be highlighted on whatever it is you're painting, it's the first wash that will be the highlight colour. So right up to the edge here. So I will darken some areas of this door and this first wash will be the lighter um, colours that will show up because I won't paint on top of some parts of the door. Similarly for the windows, the window frames. I very rarely use black in uh, my watercolour paintings. I tend to mix other colours to create my dark colours. Uh, but I'm going for black here because the paint colour is black on these doors and windows. But you can create really lovely blacks from loads of colours. Um, probably my favourite mix is Payne's Grey and uh, Burnt Sienna. or when I say blacks, uh, dark greys and it stops your paintings from becoming quite flat. If you use straight black there's a possibility that it can sort of flatten your image. Okay I'm now going to go in with, it's a kind of purpley brown wash um, on top of the dry underwash we did. So I'll go in and paint this right on top and you can see immediately how the the glow of the underwash comes through. So I'm trying to keep it quite watery so the edges don't dry. See that pool of water that I'm pushing around here. And we get a nice bit of texture as well from this paint. Um, what did I put in it? So I need to double check and see what purple it is. But you get granulating colours that give you texture. Um, so 
see all over there, you can see that texture that is just creating itself. Which is perfect for a thatched roof. Now normally I would turn my paper around here, but because of the way I've got the video set up, it's tricky for me to do that and carry on filming. So I'm painting a little bit awkwardly for you guys. I also added in a, a touch of um, burnt sienna to this to mute down the purple a little bit. So obviously we don't want it bright purple. Okay, now I didn't, I, I sort of left this bit here because you wouldn't notice if I do get any sharp edges you wouldn't notice it so much around the stones, but it's still nice and wet, so it should be okay. Isn't this a beautiful brush? Okay, so that's a good layer on here, on the roof. And while I'm waiting for the roof to dry, I'll put my first layer of bright red onto these wagon wheels. Now even the areas that I'm going to go in and paint a fair bit darker um, to show shade, um, I'll put this uh, first layer of red on and the darker areas will be you know, a very, very dark red, dark brown, close to black. Um, but it's nice to have the actual colour of the object painted first because it does show through. It might be very subtle, but it does show through and it ties it all together. just go over the whole part of the central area okay and then we'll go over to the other side and do the same it's a yucky day in Inverness here today so I don't feel guilty about not being out um, I walked the dog I walked Bruno earlier anyway so um, I deserve my time painting. I live in Scotland and uh, sunshine is not uh, a guarantee ever. So sometimes if it's a sunny day and I'm painting inside I feel very guilty. So if it's a rainy day, there's no guilt. First wash onto the wagon wheels. So for the areas between the stones, I saved myself some hassle and I actually penned these areas in. I don't usually do that. I usually paint it in in watercolour. But this time round, I thought, oh, I'm going to make life a little bit easier for myself. So I penned these in, but the area in between the stones on these little walls that come out, um, they're not black, they're grey, so I'll have to paint these. I don't have a grey pen. So the grey colour I'm using is actually a mix of um, the purple I, I was using on the roof and a touch of orange and that greys it down a little bit. And you can see how neutral this purple looks just now. It looks almost like a grey 
and that's with the um, yellow ochre showing through. Okay, I'm just going to go in while I'm waiting for paint to dry. I'm going to go in and paint a few of these tiny little stripes on the curtains. On the windowsills here. I'll just put a wash across them. And I'm going to put a wash. Oh, I hope that blue has dried. I'm going to put a wash on the stonework that you can see through the window. It's meant to be the stone of the back of the cottage. So again, this grey is the same purple as I used on the roof. And with a little bit of... Um, it was either burnt sienna or uh, yellow ochre in it. Just to neutralise the sort of intensity of the colour of the purple. Because I'm not looking for purple, I'm looking for grey. And it's always a really good idea to use the same uh, range of colours throughout your painting. It helps tie the painting together so it's not a, a mishmash of, you know, dozens of colours which can be quite hard to look at. Um, so using the same, the same colours, even if it's the same colours, to make other colours uh, throughout the painting, that really does tend to tie the whole painting together. Right, I'm going to go in just now and give us a bit of shade to help us figure out how it's all looking. So I'm going to use that shade on this side of the wall as well. It'll help the wall stand out. It'll show that it's protruding. And then I'll just wash the colour off my brush and blend the edge of that so it's not a hard line. And I'll do the same on this side of this wall. It immediately shows the three dimensionness um, of the house. You know, it immediately shows these these bits of walls are sticking out. I love shadows; they're the best thing for helping your painting. Okay, so we'll just soften the edge of that. You can immediately see that these walls are sticking out now. I can do the same thing going along underneath the thatched roof as well. Now this will this will need um, another layer of darkness, but just to help us get the feel of it. Wash the water off my brush to soften the edge. Oh, 
Now some shadows do have a sharp edge to them, uh, but these shadows don't. So I started off with black on the door and on the window frames, um, but as I said earlier, I, I tend not to usually use black, so I think I'm going to go in um, on the second layer with my dark, dark purple. So it's a dark kind of purpley brown. And I'm leaving the very top of the wooden frames unpainted with the second layer. So you can see I'm using pretty much the same colour as I used on the roof, but you can see that this second layer on top of the darker grey here is showing the colour much darker than the second layer up on there because the first layer up on there was the um, yellow ochre. So that's much paler than the same colour is down here. Just dab some more colour at the very top to help darken it where it will be darker anyway. Same over here. And I'll take that same colour down on to the doors as well. Now, if this colour shows up too purple for my liking, I may go back in uh, with another colour to neutralise it. So I'm going to stay away from that, um, these lines there, and try and leave them with just the pale grey showing to see if that will work as a bit of a highlight on a part that's meant to be sticking out a little bit. So I'm going to wash this colour out a little bit to make it not the same flat colour all the way down. I'll make it vary a little bit and become a little bit lighter as it goes down. So I'm washing the colour out of my brush and then I'm just going back in with a kind of semi-clean brush and just pulling some of the colour down at the bottom. So I've mixed up, uh, well I haven't actually mixed up any colours yet, but I've added little pools of various colours that I am going to use to uh, put more detail into the brickwork. Um, now let me see what I've used. Um, so I've got a little bit of raw sienna light, I've got yellow ochre, I've got a brown ochre, burnt sienna, uh, so I've got my purple there, I've got Payne's grey here and some of these areas where you've mixed previous paint up before, they're fantastic for using when you're wanting to paint neutral areas, you can just mix a little bit of, of uh, the colours in your palette together and you'll get really, really good greys and browns. So I'm going to use a range of these colours to paint in the bricks now. So I'm going to use my paler colours on the front of these two walls. I'm 
what you can do while they're wet is just go back into um, the colours in your palette and just dip other colours into it just to give it a bit of texture So these stones up at the very top will be quite dark because they're underneath the uh, the roof so there'll be a, a shadow on them so I'm okay to paint them quite dark. get a little bit of blue or cooler colour going into some of them. So you can see you don't need to paint precisely when you're doing these bricks um, because they've got so many different shades going on in them. Um, you can just dab your brush around them, in them. So while I'm waiting for them to dry, I shall go ahead and paint in some of the other bricks. So you can see it's all quite random. Um, pick a colour up with your brush and then go around some random bricks. soften some of the edges on some of the marks and then I'll go in with some warmer colours for some of the other bricks And we'll do the same thing over on this side. Now I'm not very happy with my bricks at the front of the house here so I think I've got to fill in some of the areas with um, more slabs. A roof is finally dry so I can go back into these stones all along the top and try and give them a bit more texture and definition as well. So it's really similar to what we did with the, the stones on the cottage walls. I'm going to go underneath each one, so just at the very bottom of the stone and on the actual roof itself. 
and paint in the shadow. So again, this is the purple with a little bit of Payne's Grey added to it and a little touch of Burnt Sienna. So you can see where the bricks are still wet, the paint bleeds up into the bricks themselves. Uh, where the, the stones, rather. So it does the work for you. You can see, uh, because we've added um, more colour to everything, that we've kind of lost the definition that we created earlier on where we made it a little bit darker in there. So we're going to work on a little bit on the definition of some of the areas. Um, but first of all, I'm going to go and add um, a stroke of dark, uh, darker paint underneath on the bottom of a lot of the bricks where they will be in the shade because the light's hitting them from above. So again, it's a, it's random, randomly jumping about the various bricks. So you don't have to change colour every time you, you do a brick. Um, you don't work brick, you know, next to the brick next to the one you've just painted. Um, you're working according to the colour that you've got on your brush. So, have a look at that. See the difference between that side and that side. Can you see it? I hope you can. So, we've kind of lost the effect of, um, if you remember, we darkened all the way along here underneath where the thatched roof would have been, just because we brought so many more colours and more depth into it. So let's redo that again. Um, I mean this is what watercolour is. It's layering and layering until you get to until you get to the effect you desire. So I'm going to take that darkness across to here. This is underneath the thatch. Right, so that looks awfully harsh. So I'll wash the colour out of my brush and go and soften the edge. There we go. What difference that makes. So this area here on the roof and here on the roof um, will be a little bit darker because um, this bit is prominent, this bit is coming out the way. I'll just blend that into the rest of the roof. So you don't want it too harsh. So just try and take away this sort of line. I had quite a harsh line going down the way. So I'll just try and take that away. And then I'll just... streak in some more colour to show more texture. Right, we've lost the darkness over here so I need to add some more in. So 
So that's given us a nice variation of colour across the roof as well. So I'm going to leave that to dry and see how how it dries. Okay, so I'm going in to the beautiful red wheels. And what I'm doing is just painting the same red so a more uh, a less watery wash of the same red in the areas that would be darker. Okay, and we'll go and do the same thing on the other side. Now, red is a funny colour because when, uh, if you make red very pale, then it appears as pink. So it doesn't really remain as the colour it is when it's very uh, watery. So I'm darkening the areas I want to be darker with a second layer of red, which does make it red. But the remaining, the bits I'm not putting the second layer on are showing as pink. So it may be, I'll decide once I'm done, it may be that I put another layer of red over the whole wheel to make sure it doesn't appear as pink. My hands are not as steady as they normally are and I know the reason why is because I'm really, really hungry and I won't stop this. I'm not stopping to eat, so I think I'll have to stop to eat. Does anybody else get that? Shaky when they're hungry. So I'm also going to use that very intense colour and go back onto our door. So as you continue to add layers onto your painting, um, you often need to go back and add more layers somewhere else uh, because the intensity you thought you had in the first place isn't quite so intense anymore and you've perhaps lost the contrast that you were you were looking for okay we're going to paint a little bits of rope going round the stones Okay, I have to angle my painting for this. So I'm just going to paint a little area of darker colour underneath uh, the rope. 
that goes along the top, that would be, I believe, dangling rope off it down to these stones there. Turn the painting around this way and I'll do the same above it. Okay, I'm going to go back into these wheels with another layer of red because they're not bright enough for me. Or not red enough for me, should I say. And I'm going to go and paint these slabs now. Again, they're just really going to be neutral colours. So a mix, mix of whatever's in my palette. Um, I actually started painting the windows in and I forgot to record, so apologies for that. I'm just darkening what's meant to be the bricks at the back of the the inside. And the same over here. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this demo tutorial. Um, I hope you've learned lots of tips and techniques that you can take away um, to help you paint your own cottage. And please, would you subscribe? Press the subscribe button and I'd love to hear from you in the comments below as well. So thank you very much once again. Bye bye.